before his death. Now, let me bring the hadith and then I'm going to also show you why hadith dogmatism is problematic and pro I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Today, as you see, our topic is about the death of Muhammad and who killed Muhammad. First of all, disclaimer, it's not me. I wasn't there because you never know. The Muslim, they might accuse you of anything. <clears throat> Secondly, it is not uh, America. And this time, according to the story, it was a Jew. You know, the Mohammedan, they claim anything happened to them, they blame the Jews always. You know, if, if a guy, he went to the bedroom, he could not do boom, boom, he will blame the Jew, you know. If there is no electricity in their houses, they blame the Jew. Uh, if, uh, you know, if a guy, uh, his wife, uh, he married a woman, she thought she is something because she is wearing burqa when he took the the curtain from her face, then he find uh, a half man, half women, he will blame the Jews. This is very normal behavior, but this story here is different. In this story, they can really blame the Jews. So let us make it clear. However, because this story <coughs> uh, bring a lot of an embarrassment to the Mohammedan, a lot of an embarrassment, some of those who they try to defend and they find their religion is full of embarrassment, always they try to oppose. If you remember before, <clears throat> we have this guy, his name uh, Abu Muhti Abu Layth, who could not accept that his God Allah is going to ejaculate and this is how he will reject resurrect people from death, including his prophet. And when the Muslims, they read their books, they go crazy. I don't blame them, but you go crazy or not, who care? This is what your prophet said, and this is what you have in your books. Allah will say, now, <laughs> I have to translate this, so brace yourselves, people. <clears throat> Allah will send, there's a fluid from beneath the arsh which will ejaculate like the sperm of men. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, whoa. Isn't it amazing that Muhammadan, they are laughing at their own religion? Do you see what the internet is doing to Islam? 
If I am the one is laughing, the Muslim will be so upset. This is a Muslim. He is laughing at the stupidity of his prophet and the stupidity of his religion. His God is going to ejaculate, and this is how he will reject people from death. <clears throat> And Muhammad himself, he is going to be resurrected by the sperm of Allah. Oh, people, let me repeat. Look at it for yourselves. Thumma yursilu Allahu ma'an. Allah will send down on earth, shower down on earth, fluid from beneath his arsh. So beneath his throne, there's a collection of fluid, which is kamaniyir rijal, which is like the sperm of men. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to shower down on the globe and what's going to happen is this is going to then give birth to uh to once again life so sperm <laughs> before that people i had to had to yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> do you see how far this religion goes and do you see what happened to a human being who is a muslim who start thinking and look at the books behind him and the funny he don't accept that he, he want to say to you i don't like this hadith and accept it but he have it in his book so why you buy you spend money for these books so you know the garbage of this religion is beyond imagination and the Muhammadan, they agree about not to agree about anything in Islam. So when one of them, he says something, the other one, he say, I don't agree. Pay attention. Just from the language of the Quran and just from the context of the Quran, we give it the presumption, but not the certainty. <laughs> so that's the strong inkling strong suggestion jesus so for one person it's a strong for the other person it's not a strong for one person it's correct for the other person is not correct so how in the world anyone can follow such a stupid religion if we can correct religion now let us go to the story which this person is going crazy over it not the ejaculation but the story of his prophet death present to you something which I call the war wager hadith paradox. So what is that about? People, stay tuned. Stay tuned, stay yeah. Tuned. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So first of all, this hadith. So right now, that there is a there is a notion, people, that the prophet was poisoned and died as a result of this poison. Now many ex-Muslims and atheists and Islamophobes have taken it to social media saying that, look, the Prophet died a humiliating death, uh, the Prophet of Islam, having been poisoned. No, this is not the reason we are making fun of it. The reason we are making fun of it because the women she bought $3 poison from Home Depot, some they say from Walmart, and then we find that the Muslim, the Muhammadan, they die to prove to us that Jesus was saved by Allah. And then we find that their best, his best prophet Muhammad, his most beloved prophet Muhammad, he died by a poison from Walmart or Home Depot. If we ask the Muhammadan, how come Muhammad, he died by poison, by the hand of the Jew, And yet, Allah, he saved Jesus from the death by the hand of the Jews, but he refused to save Muhammad from the death by the hand of a Jew, not in four hours crucifixion process or five hours or six hours. This is four years of death. If we go to the hadith, which this guy is talking about, and he's tr trying his best to, uh, to, to fight it, we will find this.
I will open my uh, Skype soon. <clears throat> And the funny is that this hadith is in Al-Bukhari, in Muslim, etc. You know, it's all over. So how anyone can say it is not accepted? You know, and suddenly now Al-Bukhari is a book of lies. So the prophet in his element in which he died, used to say, oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar, which is, this is confirmed now who killed him, the Jews. Uh, 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 I still feel the pain caused by the uh, food I ate Khaybar, and at this time I feel as if my orta is being cut, in, cut off from that poison. Muhammad and they have many attempts to fight this story, but always they come to a failure because especially the scholars they confirm it and they say this is accurate. As an example, this is here Islamic website, very official. I think it's coming from Qatar. And here, fatwa number 193515. And this is the date, this is the number, etc. And the question is uh, about, uh, you know, the, the guy who's asking, uh, like uh, how, how you can say the prophet, he died by poison. And it says it's cutting his artery. When the Quran says, if Muhammad did lie, Allah will cut his artery. And he said, this is very dangerous, which means the following, the prophet was not protected by Allah and he was not a prophet. The answer for this question, well, first of all, this hadith is very accurate. This hadith, is very accurate. And you cannot deny it. And it's against, not against the Quran. And the death of Muhammad by poison, it is confirmed, famous, Go to fatwa number 50756. We can use Google Translation here. So you can read. So look how, how, how painful this is, is to the Muhammadan. The question itself saying it clearly. Well, if this hadith is true, that means Muhammad, he was not a prophet. And he is not protected from Allah. Why he isn't a prophet? Because the women who gave the poison, when Muhammad, he asked her why you did that, she said, well, if you are a prophet of God, then God will protect you. If you are just a king, like any king, you want to rape, etc. Well, you know, uh, then you will die. So the poison was an, a, a test of the prophethood of Muhammad. Now the woman, she can claim whatever she want. She can say, and then Muhammad died, but this not, will not prove him to be a, a false prophet. But when Muhammad, he says, Allah will not allow you to do so, he confirmed what she said. Muhammad, he said to her, Allah will not allow you to succeed, which means to kill me. Why? Because simply you just told us why you are trying to kill me simply because you want to show everybody if I am a prophet or not, so Allah will not allow it to happen. And then when Muhammad, he said, after suffering from his pain and his, uh, uh, etc., when he said, well, I am dying because of this poison, so he confirmed it. And here you see the answer of the sheikhs, the, the scholars, not kids in YouTube, the evidence of this text of the hadith, it does not contradict the Quran. And it's famous and it's confirmed that he died by poison, as you see here. And as for the death of the Prophet, may Allah pray on him, not for him, as Mimi Hijab said, from the effect of the poison, it's well known, established matter. So don't go there. It is absolutely 
صحيح. And here he says go to fatwa number 50756. So this story here bring uh, some horrible news for the Muhammadan. Number one, Muhammad died by poison. Number two, the man who's asking the question, he is quoting the verses from the Quran where it says that if Muhammad, he died, Allah will cut off his artery. So is it a coincidence? If we go to the Old Testament, and actually this is the chapter the Muslims always they mention to us trying to claim that this is about prophet and I find it very very uh, very good location to Muslim to say that this is about their prophet uh, because in chapter 18 in, in the Old Testament uh, uh, Deuteronomy book it says uh, the Muslim they say to you I will raise a, you know one from you between you etc from your brother to be a prophet etc and then this is what the Muslims always they make a child speak about it that this is about Muhammad must be about Muhammad but then you will see in the same chapter it says that the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not command to him to speak or that shall speak in other the names the name of other gods even that prophet shall die How clear is that? Muhammad, he spoke in the name of other gods, and Muhammad, he gave us tons of lies. The Muslim, they say to you, as an example, Muhammad, he predicted that the Roman, they will be defeated. But Muhammad predicted that the Roman will be defeated by Arab, not by the Turkish. Actually, he, the, uh, Muhammad, he considered the Turkish as the people of Gog and Magog, or a branch from them. And he says, stay away from the Turkish as long as they stay away from you. He never predicted the Turkish would take over. He says, you, speaking to the Arab in the front of his eyes, you are going to open or control or occupy al Constantinia. You. False prophecy. Muhammad, he predicted that the Roman, they are going to be the majority of mankind. And for sure, this is very stupid. Rome is Italy. And if you go check right now, I think Italy is not even more than 40 to 50 million inhabitants. They are not even the size of a city in China. So when Muhammad, he says such a claim and he claimed to be a prophet, obviously he is a false prophet. Let me try to find you the hadith about the Roman. Then the Muhammadan they say, oh, when the prophet he say uh, the Roman, he mean the Christians. He mean the Christians. But the Quran always, and Muhammad, he called the Christians Nasara. He never called them Roman. There's a chapter in the Quran speaking about the room. It's called the chapter of a room. When the Roman get defeated, this is not the Christians, this is the Roman. Because there is Roman, and there's, there's a Christian in Ethiopia, there's a Christian in, in, in India, there's a Christian everywhere. So when Muhammad, he says that the Rome or the Roman, they are uh, going to be the majority of mankind. And I will put for you the hadith in the screen.
And as you know, the room, the Roman, first they are European. Second, Rome is there, still there. And Muhammad making a false prediction. As you see in the front of your eyes. When the hour will come, the Roman would form the majority of mankind. False prophecy. When Muhammad he says, you are going to uh, occupy Constantinia, Again, Muhammad, he failed because he predicted that the Arab in front of him, they are the one who is going to open an, a, a, the, the city. And how we can prove that? The hadith is, not, we know we can post it for you and show you. <clears throat> Muhammad, he said, clearly speaking to the Arab, that you are going to open this city and all those hadith confirm that. Actually, let me give you another hadith which is uh, more clear. Uh, this one, I think, is better. I cannot find it in the in the English translation. Give me a second. See a different one. Um, here we go. <laughs> you know the the nice thing about Muhammad that he is a big mouth person. He never shut up, and the more he speak, the more he do poo poo. I cannot find this one in the English too. Translation. Um, let us see. All right, let us see this one. According to Muhammad, the army which is going to invade Constantinia is going to come from the city of Medina. Read this one. From the city of Medina. Do you see it? The last hour would not come until the Roman would land. He named the name of uh, the land and uh, the field of Dabiq. An army consisting of the best soldier of the earth at that time will come from the Medina. But all of us, we knew that the soldier who attacked Constantinia, our city, which we will take it sooner or later back, was not from the Arab, and never was, not even a soldier from them, from the city of Medina. So Muhammad, again, he lied, and he failed in every prophecy, even the one who, part of it become true, like now the Muslim, they occupy the city. Muhammad, he never predicted that Turkish will become Muslims, actually the opposite. He says, leave the Turkish, Let us find you the hadith. Stay away from the Turkish as long they left you alone. Let us go and find the other hadith. Here we go. Stay away from the Turkish and the Ethiopian as long as they leave you alone. Muhammad, he never predicted that the Turkish would become Muslims. Actually, Muhammad, he made fun of the Turkish. And in different books we found, and we mentioned, we made a video about it before, that Gog and Magog are people from of Turkey. 
they are a group of the people of, of, uh, of the Gog and Magog. And we can't find you. The reference, give me a second. I don't like to say things without proofs. And I hope the admins are posting for you the reference so you can save them and take a note about it. Uh, let us show you this one here. And again, Muhammad, he failed, not only with his prophecy, but with his racism, proving to us that he is very racist evil. The judgment day will not come until you fight the Turkish people, who their faces would be like hammer shield wearing clothes of hair, walking with shoes of hair. You will notice here, Muhammad, he says the Muslims will fight the Turkish. So obviously the Turkish are not the Muslims. And this is something have to have to come to exist before the judgment day. While the other hadith he mentioned, speaking to the people in front of him, saying that you are going to attack Constantinia and you are going to conquer it. And the other hadith says that the army which is going to attack Constantinia is going to come from Medina. And all of us, we knew that the Turkish, they never have even for a day, for an hour, for a second, a caliphate in Medina. The Sultan never lived there. And here you see how Muhammad making fun of their look and their eyes, describing them in a very, very racist way. Their face is like hammer shield. And Muhammad, he go more in details that the people of Azerbaijan, the Turkish from Azerbaijan, and they're from Armenia, which means the ones who occupy in Armenia. I cannot find this hadith in English but we can't find it in different place. Let us see. Always if something I could not find in English, I could not find in English because the Muslim did not translate it, not because it's not there, you know. Not because it's not there. Now give me a second and we will show it to you. All right, let's see this one. I found the tafsir. Um, we can use actually this fatwa here. And it says that this is a hadith is approved to be sahih. Sahahahu al-Alabani. Let us use Google translation. It says here. Uh, let us see.
the Messenger of Allah, he said, that Gog and Magog, they try every day to open a hole in the dam, which is mentioned in chapter 18 in the Quran. And those people, they are between two mountains in Armenia and Azerbaijan. Use Google Translation. between i.e. two mountains which are Armenia, Armenian and Azerbaijani. So those are Gog and Magog who they will be ever forever the enemies of Allah. So Muhammad again he failed. The Turkish who they are from Azerbaijan is the one who they are people of Gog and Magog. They are Muslims now and they are part of the Turk nation. And this is why Erdogan, he died to defend them against Armenia. Armenian are not even Asian, they are white European. Showing you the ignorance of Muhammad, that he think that Armenian are Turkish. So if we wanna keep going and showing you more and more evidence that Muhammad, he failed in every prophecy, not for sure not to mention historic mistake, a grammar mistake in Arabic, uh, uh, language mistake, names mistake, uh, Mary is the sister of Aaron and Mary is the daughter of Amran, which is the father of uh, uh, Aaron and Moses. The sperm is coming from the backbone of the man and the, you know, and the, the ribs of the women. Then we want to find that Muhammad, he died by the poison which he ate at Khaybar. It confirmed one more thing. That Muhammad, again, he is a liar and his lies is working against him. When the Quran says, if Muhammad is lying, fabricating Quran, in chapter 69, verse number 46, certainly will cut his, the artery of his heart. Certainly, we will cut the artery of his heart. And this is exactly how Muhammad died. I'm going to open my Skype to give the Muslim the, the opportunity so they can refute us if they can, if they wish. And as you see, we are not speaking from our own. We are showing you a pure Islamic books with reference and names, names of the books, pages, hadith number, etc. Can the Muslims deny that? According to Muhammad, his death proven that he is a false prophet. And there's a question no Muhammadan ever dared even to explain why Allah would save Jesus, but he would not save Muhammad. Give me a reason. If you are a Mohammedan, you like to speak to us, only Mohammedan, please. Don't send me a text saying hello, etc. those things. I will block you. If you are a Mohammedan, would you, you know you would like to call? Hmm. Any Mohammedan? Soon we might have a nice debate. Just stay tuned with a bunch of shakes.
the sheikhs do not know that I am going to debate them. They think somebody else. So we will ambush them, as they say. And they will be very sorry. Do we have any Muhammadan? Would like to call us and tell us how it happened that the Quran is consistent with the story of Muhammad's death, which is proving that Muhammad is a fraud. My Skype is open if you like to join us in the conversation. Any Muhammadan? Do you know the hadith about Muhammad being raped by a black guys? Well, Muhammad, he claimed that those black uh, zinj, they uh, rided him. They did not rape him, they did ride him, which is very weird. I mean, what do you mean they did ride him? I mean, this guy is very funny and very stupid. Actually, this is one of the stories proving Muhammad to be an idiot. Hello? Um, I just want to say this. Um, you want to say just this uh, only? No, no, this is only. Included. Only this. Um, so why, why only this? You don't want to talk about the topic? Yeah, yeah. I'm not really knowledgeable. I'm not really like which I seem to those topics. You, you know? are not what? I'm not into those topics. Why you, you are into what? Like cartoon? What are you into? Why you are calling me then? Uh, theology, but yeah, you're not in those punks. Can I ask you a question? You are not what? You know, why the, why the Muhammad and we, I'm speaking about the topic for the last 45 minutes and you call me to tell me, can I ask you a question? I will spin your mouth now. Why you don't want to tell me what happened? Speaking for the last 40 minutes, introducing a topic and then you call me, you say to me, I'm not into this topic. So what you were doing, watching Mickey Mouse? Clear proof that they have no answer. Otherwise, they will be all over me. I mean, this religion is very weird, funny, and stupid. By the way, uh, uh, you know, do you remember the story of the cat, the who do not walk in the Quran? And uh, sadly, not all of you. Uh, did they like to to join the experiment, which is Muslim, like the, the Muslim is the one who in, like in, introduce us to this uh, such an experiment. The Muslim they claim that nobody can really no no cat will walk in the Quran, and they have video shared by millions around the world, and we see many of those who they are evil liars, and they may like make video reaction. Do you want to see the reaction of a Christian prince about the cat who don't walk in the Quran? One of you sent me uh, uh, this video uh, of, uh, I think the hand show, it's a, a lady hand, uh, of her cat and what she did with the Quran. No cat can walk on the Quran. No cat, brother. What a cute cat. Uh oh, she is getting closer. She is stepping in the Quran. Can you believe it? She is standing on the Quran. She have like she is even licking now her tongue and she is enjoying. Now this cat, by the way, she sent me an application to work uh, uh, here with us. You know. She said, as long as I can prove Islam to be false, and she is just a cat, well, why she cannot work here with us and uh, help us to defeat Islam? So she have a picture, she sent us a picture of herself. She is wearing a tie, looking for a professional, interesting job. 
So we will see, you know, uh, if we will approve this new uh, new person, which is helping us to prove Islam to be false. All right. Let us see. We have a caller. I don't know who is calling. This is okay, hold on. So what do you think, guys? Should we hire? <laughs> Should we hire this cat? I'm not sure really. I mean, she have a qualification to be honest with you. She is smart. It took her two seconds to prove that Muslims, they lie to us when they speak about uh, miracles. I mean, how they spread this cult to the point they are trying to seek the aid of a cat. Their God could not help them. Mrs. Cat is a solution. I'm not sure. You can tell me what do you think. About it. Later when we finish in the comment section, please let us know if you think she is qualified. You know, I mean, she is ready. She is wearing a nice tie. I don't know where she got this tie from, but I mean, you know, these days you can purchase anything from Amazon. And look, I mean, look. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. She is beautiful. She is professional. And she have, uh, you know, good appetite for walking in the Quran. So everything is there. Nothing is missing. Any Mohammedan? I mean, do you see how cheap this cult is to the point they are trying to seek a help of a cat to prove that their God is God? So their prophet is a false prophet. We prove it in everywhere from their books. We don't use any one books except their books. And then the Mohammedan, they go to seek help from cats, from the animal world. And then they make a video, editing the video, obviously, that the cat, she is not going to walk in the Quran. And now anyone at home, he have a cat or a dog or a rat, you can try it. Muhammad will intercede to those who die in Medina. Allah will rise him first. What does this have to do with our topic, Harun? I mean, this is the, exa the best example of the Muhammadan. You talk about hummus, they talk about, uh, you know, how to, uh, uh, you know, to change diaper. It's like we send the message to the wrong person. Hold on. Any Abdul? Where is those people? Who is a Muslim would like to join us? Anyone? How do you explain to us that Muhammad's death is in total agreement with the Quran that if he is lying, 
Allah will cut his artery. Now somebody might say, somebody might say, well, uh, if you are saying that Allah, he cut his artery or his liar, then that make Allah a true God. No, my friend, I believe that my God is the one who make the lie of Muhammad happen to prove him to be a fraud. Prove me wrong. Somebody is saying, can you show me where the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, he says, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls? Well, this is proof to me that you people, when you watch my videos, you don't save reference and you guys are lazy. And then you come to me, can you show me this? Can you show me that? Maybe I should say no. Because if I say it once and twice and three times and 20 times and 70 times, it's enough. But still people, lazy. You know, they believe that Christian Prince is always there for them. He will give them the reference, brother. Why we want to save it? We need no need to save it, right? It doesn't matter really how many times we show it to them. Muhammad, he says, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls. And this is, exists in many, many, many locations. And we can actually, let us see if we can find it in English hadith. But if you open the interpretation books of the Muhammadan, you will find the story. And actually, I don't know why people are so lazy to the point they don't want to search even in Google, because I believe if you search in Google in two seconds, did Muhammad say attack the Roman and get the blonde girls? I'm sure you will find it. But people are lazy. They don't want to find anything. They want Christian friends to find them anything. Like, you know, we have a Christian prince. He is nice. He's sci fi does things. This is Tafsir at Tabari. Page number 287, variant number 14. Trust me, tomorrow I will find that maybe even the same person saying to me, can you show me where they know? Yeah, talking to myself. It says here that the prophet says, tabuk banat al -asfar. Attack the Roman, you will get the blonde girls. Hadith number 6785. Who? What book? At-Tabari. Tomorrow they will come to me and they will ask me again, where we can find this? And this is, by the way, not only in this hadith, the hadith after it, the hadith after it, the hadith after it, the hadith after it, all of them, they are saying the same thing. But as usual, they don't listen. What website is that? Watch the chat, you will see the admins posting the website for you. And I will post it. But it is in Arabic. So this is Tafsir al-Tabari, we can show it in other Tafsir, doesn't matter. And this is again additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. There is no way a prophet of God who believe in God, who is claiming to be decent, he asks his followers to attack the neighbors just because they have a blonde girls. And when a man of the Muslim, he said to Muhammad, don't tempt us by women, Muhammad, he called that man a hypocrite. Debate Ali Dawa. Who is Ali Dawa? I did not remember. Is that the person who was wearing a circus uniform, speaking to apostate prophet? And then there is a girl, she came and she put some grape in his mouth. Is that the same person you are talking about? I mean, how in the world even you mention this kid? This kid, this is the one who will, who will debate me? I mean, I could not believe it that there's an idiot wearing a, wearing a circus, uh, uh, like, he looked like a joker with this suit. And how in the world you claim to be a Muslim who will blow and you're wearing a suit? And the suit is what? It's a joker suit. And then the joker, when he is talking, supposedly defending Islam, he's he have a girl 
I'm so grateful that he didn't, and she did not lick his fingers in the video, as the prophet said. She is putting some grape in his mouth. Do you even respect your religion? A person speaking about Allah, he do this? And as long as you are asking me to call him, well, hey, here we go, give me, I will call him. Shall I? Do we there? We will give him a grape if he, you know, if he speak to us. So who is a Muhammadan would like? Debate with Daniel. My friend, don't send me those stupid messages. Bring me the guy to debate. What do you want me to do? Go chase him in their house? Debate this guy? Can you debate this guy? What about debating the other guy? Well, I'm here. What a nation of potatoes. Not even one of you is a man. The only one who called me is a guy. His name is Ultimate Fort. Who this guy who say whatever he want? He's a crazy, he's mental. Your Muslims who claim to be uh, knowledgeable in Islam, etc., they don't call because they knew their size. They will call only someone. It will not make them fry them. So who is a Muhammad and would like to call us and tell us how Muhammad died and why Allah killed him? You know, remember, the Muslims, they say that anyone die is by the will of Allah. By what? By the will of Allah. That means that the women who killed Muhammad, Muslims believe in destiny. So the woman who killed Muhammad, she was doing the will of Allah. It is not allowed for any soul to die except by the will of Allah. So the woman who put poison for Muhammad, she was for sure practicing a punishment coming by Allah. Chapter 3, verse number 145. Now the Muslim, they will say to you, this is Da'if Quran. This is Da'if Quran. Because Islam is Da'if. Muhammad is Da'if. Muslims are Da'if. Bukhari is Da'if. All of you are Da'if. The only strong is the cat. The one who stepped over the Quran and Allah could not stop her. Brothers and sisters, we had the cat. Did you see the cat, brother? The cat did not walk in the Quran. Do you know, brother, why? Because the Quran is the book of Allah. What are you trying to say to me? The cat, she is a Muslim too? Is that why? Hmm? لا يأل عما يفعل My friend, your Arabic is funny, Mr. Yasin. You missed a big letter there. لا يسأل What يأل is that Arabic supposedly? You made me dizzy. Almost I stepped on the Quran because of your question. In Arabic, which is broken Arabic, I'm, I, I think you got it from Google or somewhere. Do we have any Muhammadan? You know, we have to put or to uh, like think about Islam as something uh, uh, special.
Two days ago, when I went online, a Muslim woman, she called me, and she insists that she wants to do breastfeeding for adults. She called me live on air. And me, myself, I do not know what to do. Take the offer, refuse the offer, say yes, say no. I was afraid if I say no, Allah will punish me. How you can say no to the teaching of a holy God coming through a holy prophet? And the Muslim women, the Muhammadan women who called me, she was very serious and she continued sending me text messages saying that the offer is still standing firm. And I put the word firm between two brackets, you know what I mean? Because we are talking about breast. And some people still until now question if Muhammad is a prophet. If Muhammad is not a prophet, How in the world come with such a teaching, beautiful teaching, that a Muslim woman, she shall have her breast given to strange men, so strange men can sit with her. Isn't it amazing, astonishing? Who can come with such a teaching beside Allah? Nobody. I don't know which we'll time in the video. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Yesterday, this lady, she called me and she offered her breastfeeding. You don't even know what Christianity is about yet. You are following Allah, the devil, the verse in the front of your eyes. Where is the, I'm trying to find when this lady she called and she offered me here. Why you try to contact me, my friend? I talk only to Muslims. Let us see, maybe now I see. Any Mohammedan? Do we have any Mohammedan? Hmm? We have Eliza is calling, the one who want to do breastfeeding for me. I'm not sure why. Hello? Are you talking about breastfeeding? Yes, uh, you are the Muslim Eliza, correct? Do you want me to breastfeed you? No, thank you. I'm not interested. But do you do that usually? Yeah, I say bismillah and then I breastfeed. Oh, okay. How many men do you breastfeed a day? Around 22. Okay. Is that for free, like a charity or for money? It's because we're allowed to. Oh, just because you're allowed to. Okay. Can you explain to us why your prophet allows such a thing? Because... He wants us to be happy. How that make you very happy? How would it feel when, you know, like a man, he do breastfeed you? Like a man you never met before, he come to your door and he knock at your door and you give him your holy nipples. Well, do you want to find out? No, I don't want to find out, so I'm asking you. Well, I can breastfeed you if you want. No, no, I don't want to find out in this way. I want to tell you, you, you I mean, look at this, look at this. We buy a new microphone. And then the first caller from the Muslim nation, if we can call them a nation, as Muhammad called them a nation, is a Muslim lady offering me her boobs. But it happened that at that moment, I was not interested. But I might rethink it. 
Because speaking too much about Islam will make you pervert. Pervert, you know, pervert. Actually, I find it very funny that even the Quran claimed that the one who made Satan pervert is Allah. Can you believe it? And if somebody makes somebody pervert, that means he is a pervert too. Don't we agree? If somebody made you, if you accompany somebody and he's a pervert, you will end to be a pervert. So the Quran confirmed that shaitan, he accompany Allah. And due to the accompany of Allah, as we see in chapter 7, verse number 16, it says, Shaitan, he said, now for thee, perverting me. Do you see it? Do you see it? Who is the one who makes Shaitan pervert? Allah? And then you ask yourself, why Allah want to make shaitan pervert? The one who is saying to me, debate this guy and this guy, bring him. Bring me your child. I'm not responsible for what is going to go missing. So if you are a person entrusted to see me debating a Muhammadan, well, go and call him right now and ask him to call me. He's welcome. A disclaimer. After he called me, he will look like a pervert. Because whoever defend a pervert, he end to be a pervert too. Any Muhammadan? You know the, the Muhammadan they get upset. I'm showing you your screen. This is your this is your translation. This is your Quran. Why do you get upset? Why the Muhammadan get so upset? I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just showing you what it says there. Here we go. Shaitan, he says to Allah, you are the one who made me, uh, you know, uh, he made Shaitan pervert. A Muhammadan, his name is Yasin. He keep repeating the same thing. He says, Allah is going, he is not going to be asked about what he do. That's because you're an idiot. This is because you're an idiot. Because you're a coward. You don't dare. We dare. Why I cannot ask Allah about what he do? When Allah, he says, he will insert your, your anus a chain. Shouldn't we ask Allah why he is a pervert? And this chain Each ring of it, each ring of this chain is equal to all the iron in the world. Isn't it a pervert? Torture? What do you think if somebody starts inserting things in your anus? Isn't it this is a pervert behavior? He could not find any torture except inserting chains in your anus? Is that really what God do? Chapter 69, and the funny is, look, this is a miracle, by the way. It's chapter 69. Once I was uh, debating a Muslim and people in the chat they start oh 69 69 I don't know what I said what is that 69 what do you mean did I miss something and they explain in the chat was 69 present you got Allah doing 69 if we go to the book of Ibn Kathir in chapter 69 verse number 32 
Look what Ibn Kathir he will say. And guess what? It's a miracle. I did not even open Ibn Kathir since two days ago. And we have it on 69 chapter miracle. Like what the heck? And then we go to verse number 32. What Allah will do, why this uh, thing is not working? Let us try again. Here we go. So according to Muhammad, obviously he have a pervert God. He says, Allah, he says, then fasten him on a chain where off the length of 70 cubits. What does that mean? Not sure. Kabul Ahbar said, every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of the iron in this world. Al-Wafi reported from Ibn Abbas, from Ibn Juraj, both they said each cupid will be a four a for for uh, for uh, arm for arm length of an angel if, 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 if this is how big it is brother ibn juraj reported that ibn abbas said fa'asliku then fasten him it will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth Take a note here, in the case of Muhammad, what happened is the opposite. The poison enter his mouth and exit his buttocks. That is for the sake of the wisdom of Allah. Which means vice versa. So it will be entered into his buttocks. Allah will push it there. In your buttocks. And he will take the chain out of your mouth. Then we arrange it, arrange on chain, just like Loctus. Who are going arranged to be stick in a stick to be roasted or roasted. It will be run, it will run into his behind until it is brought of his nostrils. Excuse my English. When the guy start try to stand up, he will not be able because the pain in his anus is so strong. And look, Muhammad here is speaking from expert, obviously. Something happened to him to the point he knew exactly what happened if you have a pain in your anus. Otherwise, how Muhammad knew that if you have a chain in your anus, you will not be able to stand up. Isn't it this is a pervert God? Isn't it this is a pervert penalty? And now what you will say, it doesn't say that, CP. This is your Ibn Kathir, and this is your translation, and this is your Muslim website. And look at the fiction. Every ring of this chain have equal iron to all the iron in this earth. In the world, actually, the world is even bigger than the earth. So imagine here, you have one inch maximum anus. And then Allah will insert a chain in the anus, and every ring have more iron than all the iron in the world. Zero Muslim caller. Zero Muslim caller. They don't dare to speak about how their prophet died. They don't dare to speak about how he gave all those false prophecies.
And one of them, he called me, he says, I have a question. Okay. The only ones who call me, really, to give some help in the topic is a Muslim lady. She want to do breastfeeding for adult. Who are you? How you feel? You, sir? It feels very good. I feel very good. And what is the purpose of this breastfeeding for adult? Well, it lets you sit around with me. Guys, when the Prophet, he ordered Muslim women, and this is additional proof that he is a pervert, he ordered the Muslim women to give their boobs to strangers. The Muslim lady, she explained it saying, well, to allow Muslim, to allow men to sit with me. Look, brother, it's a very conservative religion. You cannot sit with a true Muslim believer unless she give you her boobs and you have to suckle it for 10 different times in 10 different days until you are satisfied. Even if you have a beard, it doesn't matter. Even Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, she ordered her sisters and her nieces that no one can enter upon me unless you suckle him from your nipples. So Aisha, she have a room of secretary who have their like breast open for the clients who is coming to see Aisha. And supposedly, the reason for that, a man, he can sit with her, even though he's a stranger, after he suckled the breast of her nieces. But if you ask the Muslims, well, what this breast suckling will do? Is she, is she, is she became forbidden? They will say no. Can he have sex with her? They say yes. So what the point? Anyone can tell me the point? Any Muhammadan? Do you see how this cult is in this ability? Simple question. With simple question, Muhammad, he lose his tail. Allah, he lose his right chin. And his two arms. And his tongue is bitten by his own teeth. The one is asking about the hadith about Muhammad being righted by those uh, 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 black. You know, see some stories, depending on the story. Some story they say that those black are genie. Those black, they are genie. And they were riding Muhammad. And yes, he was in pain and he was so exhausted. But we know we cannot do what the Muslims do. We cannot say they were raping him. It doesn't say that. So it says they were riding him. And writing him mean many things. I don't know. So we cannot we cannot add our own, you know, we don't want to do what Muslims do. The Muslims are always they fabricate, you know, uh, uh, opinion. As an example, a Muslim once called me and he says, Did Jesus says drink my urine? I said, Where says that? He says, He said, the one who drink my water. <laughs> we don't want to do the same as the Muslim. So as long that the story is saying that they did ride Muhammad and Muhammad was exhausted. We have to stuck with it or stick with it. We cannot add things. We cannot say they raped him. He was very exhausted. They were riding him. And you can use your imagination. I don't know. I cannot add more. I cannot take less. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Any Muhammadan? We can make a special video about those genie riding Muhammad, who they are a human in the same time. Do 
Do we have any Muhammadan would like to tell us why Allah he killed Muhammad? Remember, the Quran say clearly that no person, no person, not even one, will die without permission from Allah. And it is being fixed by writing, which means it's a destiny written in the book of Allah. It's a destiny written how you will die, when you will die, who will kill you, you die normally or whatever, even car accident. It is written by Allah. This is what the Muslim believe. So as long the Muhammad and they agree that Allah, Prophet, uh, Mr. Muhammad, the one who prays Allah and Al-Uzza, which they are very sexy, I don't blame him, and you know it. He died by the will of Allah. So based on this, the Jewish women who sent to kill Muhammad, it was sent by Allah. Anyone disagree? Anyone dare to disagree? We, we will make a video about it, uh, my friend Matt, about Azut. Azut. I mean, this Arabic language have a lot of crazy stuff. زط زطي حطي حطي محمد محمد يحكي خرطي Do we have any Muslim would like to call us and tell us how Allah he did conspiracy how he did destiny and why he did that that a Jewish woman she will kill Muhammad by poison I mean this is not even honorable death there's no arrow involved. There is no blood involved. He was not a slaughtered, you know, to be a murderer. It's a poison. And Muhammad, he was suffering for four years. You see, one of the funny things, Muslims, once a Muslim, he says to me, that the Prophet, he healed, somebody he was injured, the Prophet, he healed him. I find this a very stupid story. As you see, Muhammad, he's dying and he can't heal himself. And he is not only dying, he is suffering badly. A horrible death. I don't know if any of you ever had some uh, food poisoning, poisoning, which is not really, I mean, it's not that much dangerous usually, but you know how much painful it is going to be in your, in your stomach. This is just for maybe a few minutes or an hour or two hours, and then after that it goes. But this guy, he is suffering like that for almost four years. And you will notice in the hadith it says, he used to say, he did not say, he used. So the man who used to say such a thing, he is suffering from it every day. It's something we used to. Every day, Muhammad, he say that. Why Allah did not heal Muhammad if Allah is the true God? And you know, even if you want to cause his death, why he is causing him this pain? Any Muhammadan? We take a break to talk about our new employee. We have a new employee. She applied to work with us in order to defeat Allah and the Muhammadan lies. She's a cat, and I think she lives in Europe somewhere, you know. She's very handsome. I don't know, this is a male or female, I'm not sure. I'm not expert with cats. She is professional. She proved to us that she can defeat Islam in less than 10 seconds. The owner of the cat put some food in the top of the Quran. This cat, she did walk in the Quran without any hesitation, proving that the Muslim, they lie to us when they say, that cats are Muslims and they will not walk in the Quran. I have her resume. She said she killed many rats and mice during her lifetime and she is expert with using his, her nails. And this is how actually she did nail the Quran and the lies of the Muhammadan about cats don't walk on the Quran. I'm not sure about her salary. We are negotiating to see 
how many cats, how many mice we have to pay her a day. I'm not sure about that. And then there's the issue about where I can provide her with mice when I have none. We need some donator. Translation is being wrong. Who cares? Your translation, you know, the, when the Muslim they say translation is wrong, by this and that, this is their translation. I mean, this is a stupid religion. What translation is wrong? This is their translation. So now their hadith is wrong. Listen, CP. This hadith is reported by Dudu from Fufu, from Susu, from Nunu. However, Yunus, he said to Zuhri, Zuhri, he said from Urwa, Urwa, she, he said from Aisha, Zuhri is very well known to be a homosexual. Therefore, his hadith is not valid because it's coming from his uh, somewhere. Urwa is very well known that he is a person who steals iPhones. And we have document and proof that he does that. Yunus, don't tell me about Yunus, please, because Yunus was a person who used to eat falafel without paying for it. Therefore, all this hadith is rejected. But this is Sahih Bukhari. Okay, Sahih Bukhari. Bukhari is very well known to be a person who was blind. Then how a blind he can witness for a story he cannot see? Get you busted. This is how the Muslims refute us. It is written in their book, it's called authentic, and then they try to prove it's not authentic, we laugh. That means they are a bunch of liars. How we can trust you anyway? If you are saying to me, your scholars are lying, then who are you? You are a liar too. Those are, those are big names in the history of Islam. Those are the companion of Muhammad. If the companion of Muhammad are a bunch of liars, then Muhammad, what kind, what kind of man he is? Imagine if I say, well, Peter was, etc., and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, John was, etc., you know? So what kind of companion uh, Jesus he had? How the companion of Muhammad, they are a bunch of liars. It's an embarrassment. Anything is an embarrassing for the Muhammadan, they will try to deny it. And as you see, we showed you the fatwa. We showed you the fatwa where it says that this hadith is a very, very authentic, very, very accurate, and nobody can say it is not. Nobody can say it's not. And this is again, this is the Islamic scholar website run by the Islamic government, islamweb.net, as you see, this is the question, the topic or the title, and this is the fatwa number, 193515. And here he is saying, the guy is asking the question, I have a problem with this hadith. Because if it is true, that means Muhammad is a false prophet then. Especially the Quran says, if the prophet, he is fabricating Quran, I will cut his artery. And he's saying what is important, what is dangerous about this story. How was this hadith correct? And God, he said in the Quran, if Muhammad gossip or make fabrication against us, we have taken his orta, you know, uh, artery. This is the Muslim question. And then right away we say the same person who's asking the question saying, there is another hadith, authentic hadith. It's authentic. So he is crying out, please help me. How in the world this is authentic? Because if it's an authentic, obviously Muhammad is a fraud. The sheikhs, they did not give him the help he is looking for. He was expecting them to say it's not authentic. They said to him, my friend, you have to accept it. There is a lot of evidence about this hadith. And this hadith, it does not even contradict the Quran, which means both in total agreement, yes, they are. Quran says if Muhammad he lie, we'll cut his artery. The hadith says, Allah cut his artery. 
And then here they can, you know, confirm that this is a very well-established matter. And as for the death of the Prophet, may Allah pray on him, by the effect of the poison, it was, it is very well known, established matter. You can read fatwa number 50756. Then when a Muhammadan, little Muhammadan, all of them they are little, those who try to deny, they make videos saying, no, he did not die poison. Let me tell you why. Have you ever heard of somebody he drank poison four years ago and then he died four years after? Have you? Well, this is a question you give it to your stupid prophet, not me. Because it is him who said that, not me. Are you saying to me that your God Allah, he inspired your prophet? And isn't it the Quran says, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Which means nothing Muhammad he say, but an inspiration from Allah. So the question then, if Muhammad is wrong, we'll say it. Be a man and say Muhammad is wrong. They don't dare to say, oh, this hadith is wrong. But as you see, their scholars confirm that this is a very authentic story. Actually, let me post for you this link here, even though it is in Arabic, and I'm using Google Translation for you, but you can use it, whatever your language is. Let us shorten the link. So we can share it, because the title has some Arabic, uh, you know, in the search, and usually Google don't allow posting if the web address have Arabic. Let us do that. All right, let me post it for you. So this is the link. This is the website we are show. We showed you from the screen where the Muslim cleric, the scholars, showing you the reference. Bella asking me why CP don't show himself. Bella, why you wanna see myself? Are you looking for a date, Bella? Why you want to see me? Why you see me? Don't show himself. Why? Why? Look, why Allah don't show himself? I am Allah. But in better version of it. Why Allah don't show himself? Hmm. Any Abdul? I mean, they cannot answer the stupidity in the religion, and now they are worried about showing myself. I don't want to show myself. What's your business? Maybe I'm not good looking. This is embarrassing, man. Why are you asking me those questions? What if I look scary? If I show myself, look, I have now almost 1,300 people watching. If I might show myself, not even one will be here. The only one who stay is me. And if me, myself, I have a mirror in front of me, I will leave too. What's your business? So they cannot refute me, they cannot answer me, and the, 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 the excuse now, why you didn't show himself, huh? Why you didn't show himself? Why you don't ask the same question to your God? Your God, Allah, he says, Allah, he will never speak to anyone except from behind a veil. This is where the word hijab is coming from. Allah never spoke to anyone except from behind the veil. Chapter 42, verse number 51. I'm not wearing a veil. I'm just using a computer. Your God, he wear a veil. Do we have any Muhammadan want to say, look at this. I mean, look how dead they are. Not even a single one of them want to give us any answer about anything. All right. So guys, it's confirmed that Muhammad, he died a horrible death because he's a fraud. Allah does not show himself because he does not exist, dude. I don't know about if he exists or not. Why not? He can be exist. Satan, he have many names.
Why not? Maybe it doesn't exist, maybe it exists, but it doesn't matter anything. Do we have any Abdul who would like to call us and tell us, refute us about anything we said? And by the way, this verse here is, is, uh, uh, is weird. I will tell you why. Because if the Quran is saying, in different, you know, two days ago, uh, a day, two days ago, we made a, ver uh, a video about they tried to extinguish the light of Allah. Remember? Try to extinguish the light of Allah, the Quran. So Allah is a light. Okay. And nobody can stop the light of Allah. No problem. Then how the light of Allah can be stopped by a curtain, by a veil? All right, Samaras, I'm happy for you that you left Islam. So guys, do you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? If Muhammad is if, if Muhammad is a person is speaking about Allah, that he don't speak to anyone except from behind the veil. And then Allah, light, nobody can stop Allah light. As you see, a veil can stop the light. We can't see the light of Allah. A little veil can hide Allah. So the glorious light of Allah is hidden behind the curtain made in, from Walmart. And why Allah, he need the material to hide himself? Can't he hide himself without material? Let us see, maybe we have Abdul. Hmm. We will see if we have Abdul for today. <laughs> if you are a Mohammedan, you like to speak to us, please feel free. We would like to hear your knowledge. Uh, I think we have a female Muslim woman. She want to do breastfeeding for me. Get out. Potato. Do we have any brave Muslim? Would like to call us. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? I mean, additional to the ones who want to give breastfeeding for me. Anyone? You see, Islam is a very convincing religion. Think about it. Women, they have to wear a burqa but in the same time, they can give their boobs. Oh, there is no sound, sorry. Uh, yeah, you guys, you, you did not miss much. Okay, no, no problem. I was playing the video, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. 
Uh, do we have any Abdul? No sound. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Any Mohammedan? Who is a Mohammedan would like to call us? Hmm? Anyone? Can you talk in the fraud of the last sermon? Well, the last sermon is, you know, that this is the funny thing about Muhammadans. When they want, they say to you the last sermon, everywhere, when they want, they say those hadith are uh, daif, and they are rejected, not only daif. I like the last sermon. Who dare to call me about it? We will laugh. The last sermon. By the way, as long as we are talking about the last sermon, do you know what the last thing Muhammad he did before he died? As long as we are talking about his death? Who remember what is the last thing Muhammad he did before he died? Think about it. A person is dying. And he is a prophet of God. What is the last thing he will do? Yes, he peed. And here I need to ask myself and yourself a question. Why? The last moment in your life, shouldn't you be busy talking about something really important, something special? How the last thing you do? Shouldn't you say Shahada? He obviously, Muhammad, he do not know he's going to die. You know, people, they're saying that when your death is coming, you feel it. So how about a prophet? Because God took him into surprise? Any Muhammadan? And as you see, this hadith is sahih. The last thing Muhammad he did, he grabbed his penis and he pissed. Anyone? You can call me only if you are a Muslim. If you are not, please don't. I will not take your call. Any Muslim can explain to us why a person, he is a prophet of God, you know, now he is in the stage of death. He did not notice that a second from now he will die. And instead, he's asking for a dish to piss in it. Anyone? Any Muhammadan? I mean, everything, everything the Muslim they write down for us is really horrible about this man. And imagine the one who is talking is the Muslims. You see, if this is a hadith written by a Christian prince, okay, I will say this guy, Christian prince, is fighting Islam, right? Who is the one who reported this? Aisha. And here you ask yourself, 
even if this is what happened, why Ayesha she is going around and telling people what the last thing he did when it's a piss? Why they are obsessed with those details? What that will do a benefit for the Muslims that the Prophet, the last thing he did before he died, he piss. Does that mean every Muslim before he died, he should pee? Because we follow the steps of the Prophet? Aisha is very well known. You know, like, you know, after studying, you know, if you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will find that this society is a very open society, a very sexual too. Uh, as an example, they have no limitation of anything to speak about. Like this one here. Aisha, she reported that one of the wives of Allah Messiah joined him in itikaf. You know, he's in time of a prayer, etc., which is usually he grabbed his testicles. And she noticed a blood and yellowish discharge coming from her. I'm not going to say the word here. They're trying to be supposed to, to hide it. So she put a dish under her when she prayed. Imagine you have a wife, she go in YouTube or in Facebook and she publish that my husband, his other wife, when she was praying, his wife, she, one of his wife praying with him, she noticed that there is some blood and she described even the color of the blood, which obviously an infection, infection, because why she have a yellowish discharge? I'm not a doctor, but I did search it. This is an infection. This woman, she is suffering from sexual disease. So she have a yellowish discharge coming from her part. What that will benefit Muhammad and what that will benefit Islam? And why even she describing the color of the things coming from her private part? What about saying, okay, she was, she have a period maybe. But no, she have no period. This is not period. I mean, can you find one thing in this cult is, is right? It is anything in this cult is right. His death is wrong. His life is wrong. His birth is wrong. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody born four years after his father's death? And then the Muhammadan to solve the problem, they come and they say, well, you know what? Yes, it's true. A Muslim woman, she can be having a child even after 10 to 12 years after her husband's death. You know, and if I show you, if I say, if a Christian prince saying things from his own, Muslim, they will say he's a liar. That's not true. Then Christian Prince, he go to their websites and he show what is written in their website and then still they say he's lying. Is that, is that true? Islam, a question and answer. This is one of the highest sheikhs and he is a member of the Islamic, uh, uh, let us say, uh, a scholar council in something, they call it something like that in Saudi Arabia. The max period of a woman having a child or carrying a child. We can use it, you know, Google translation so you can see. And this is the number 140103. Google translation. What is the longest? A question is. What is the longest? Longest. If I ask you the question, you will say what? Nine months? 11, 10 months? Here, read with me and love. The answer, thanks to Allah. And then he starts counting the opinion. Some scholars, they say, the normal one is nine months. The second scholars, they say, 
the view of Muhammad and Abdul Hakam, it is one year. Now we go to the heavy duty scholars. Those are where schools named after them, like Hanafi and Shafi'i and Hanbali, etc. Two years according to Hanafi, school of thought. The Muslim Sunni, there's four major sect. This is one of them, Hanafi. So it's two years. Three years according to the view of al Laith ibn Asad. Four years according to Shafi'i and Hanbalis. Four years, Shafi'i and Hanbalis, we are talking about majority of the population of, of Egypt now. We have Hanafi, we have Shafi'i, and we have Hanbali. What is left? Maliki. Now Maliki, we have more extreme, five years which narration from Imam Malik. <laughs> five years. Are we done? No. Six years which is narration from Az zuhri and Malik. Are we stopped? Are we done? No. Seven years which is the opinion of uh, uh, Rabia, whatever his name. You know, in English, the names come wrong in Arabic, like uh, translation. And another uh, narration from Zohri and Malik. Look like this Malik, he is not sure. A, a second ago, he said six years. A second after, he's saying seven years. So it's possible this and that. And then he says, there's no limit of a woman she has been in pregnancy. And, and this is the view of uh, uh, Abu Ubaid and Shawakani and Said some commentary of some sheikhs, blah, 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 from as suyuti or Sanguti, I don't know what is that, Ibn Baz, al Uthaymin. those are big names in the Islamic uh, scholarship. There's no limit, my friend. No limit. So we start with nine months, we go to one year, two years, three years, six years, seven years, and then we go with no limit. So imagine your wife, she call you. Let's say you divorce this woman. Things happen. And then after five years or seven years or even more, this woman, she call you from the hospital saying, Come and pay for the bill of your baby. You say to her, what baby? I divorced you 10 years ago. Seven years ago. The wife, she will say to you, you stupid idiot. Don't you know that a Muslim woman, she can, she have unlimited years after you have sex with her to give birth from you? Don't you know? If there is something not weird about this cult. Everything about this religion is a stupid. Literally stupid. And this is why the Mohammedan didn't dare really to discuss their books. The only smart one of them is the one who says, I don't accept this. I don't even accept the interpretation of the Quran. I don't accept what Muhammad said. And then I said, okay, so what do you accept? He said, I go only, you know, only by the Quran. I say, okay, let us read the Quran. I say, I don't accept translation. I say, okay, what translation you like? He said, I don't accept any translation. So do you know Arabic? He said, no. What is that? Don't say sex, my mom in the room. Oh boy, I just did. You remind me now of Joe Biden. 
Joe Biden, they write for him, Mr. President. Stop reading and don't continue, please. This is the end of the statement. Joe Biden, you continue. Mr. President, stop. Please stop reading. This is the end of the statement. Dot question mark. Now it's time for you to leave. Don't answer the journalist. And the journalist looking at him like, huh? And then it says here, no, no, don't read that. This is not for them. This is for you. Okay, don't read that. Okay, I'm not going to. Okay, okay. Actually, this reminds me of, of uh, Joe Biden. Remind me of Muhammad and his followers. I will explain to you why. Muhammad, he said in one of the hadith, if any of you write my hadith, erase it. If anyone, anyone write down a hadith from mine, erase it. Look what the Muhammadan did. The guy, he just told them, don't write anything I say except the Quran. The smart Muhammadan they wrote down. The prophet, he said, don't take down anything from me. And he who took down anything from me except the Quran, he should erase it. Like, idiot, he just told you don't write it down. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity more than this? The guy, he just said, don't write what I say. They wrote down, the prophet says, don't write what I say. The prophet, he says, you idiot, why you are writing down what I'm saying? They wrote down, the prophet, he says, why you idiot, why you are writing down what I say? The prophet said, you are driving me crazy. I just told you, don't write down what I am saying except the Quran. The Muslim, they write down, the prophet says, you crazy, stupid idiot, why you are writing down what I am saying to you when I say to you, write only the Quran. I mean, do you see the super, super intelligence? Welcome to Joe Biden world. What's wrong with those people? And look what happened. Because they keep mentioning what Muhammad said. Today we are laughing at what Muhammad said. And then you see a guy, poor guy from Africa, this guy like this Mr. Ford. May Allah plus his fault. He go crazy. I don't accept the hadith. Allah, you know, this is Arab. They are liars. You know, saying they are liars. They are liars. What about the Quran? They are liars too. You know, I bought a steak. Staff, staff, not a steak, really. Because I'm planning, if I feel like I'm going to die one day, I will go live. And I will hold my staff when I am live. And then none of you will notice that I am dead because I'm holding the staff. Enter the termite, eat my staff, as the Quran says. Have you ever heard of such a knowledgeable story? That a guy, his name is Solomon, he dies standing, and nobody noticed that he is dead. Enter the termite, they finish eating his staff, and took them almost a year. The guy, he have tons of wives. The guy, he have thousands of servants, soldiers, ministers, general in the army. Nobody noticed that he is dead because he dies standing holding a staff. I mean, even Joe Biden, he moved his eyes. Nobody noticed. And then the termite is the one who ate his staff. And who is talking as Allah? Are you going to say this is a weak hadith? Do you remember the Abdul who called me once? And I said to him, I will tell you a story about my grandfather. 
And I told him that he died holding a staff, and the guy, he said, this is silly, doesn't make sense. He didn't know that this is in the Quran, you know? He said, why? You are hurting my feeling now. <laughs> the, guy, the guy, he said, well, sorry, this is, doesn't make sense. This is a stupid story, sorry, you know? What do you mean he died and took stand in for a year? You know, his body will decay, and now the Muslim is thinking. The second you say to him, it's in the Quran, you say, I believe it. A second ago, it was silly, stupid. <laughs> what are you talking about? The second you switch the mood, you say, this is in the Quran. You say, oh, no, I believe it. And I know it. it's true. If Allah says so, I believe it, yeah? Must be true. Who can disbelieve in Allah's stories? Nobody. And here you see that the termite, they are working for Allah. So I think what happened, Allah sent only one termite, because if 10, they will eat it faster. So Allah, he called the termite department. He says, can you send me one termite? And Allah, he calculate. So how long is going to take this one termite to eat the staff of Solomon? Conclusion, 12 months. Okay, send me now three termite, because I don't want him to stand there for more longer. And by the way, here, as long we are talking about Muhammad was killed by the poison which he ate in Khaybar. How come Muhammad could not stop the angel of death? Do you remember the story of Moses beating the angel of death And he took his eye out. How come Muhammad could not do the same? And here you see the story, by the way, about Moses. It looked like Moses, he was a ninja or something, you know. I mean, the angel is coming to take your life. And now you are taking the angel eye, beating him by using your martial art. Are you sure that this Musa in Islam was not a Buddhist monk? And he play a ninja? Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, reported that the angel of death was sent, reported from Muhammad for sure, that the angel of death sent to Moses. And then Moses, he come, when he came to Moses, this angel of death, Moses boxed him and his eye was knocked out. Boing! I mean, it's so easy. The angel of death coming to take your soul. What do you need to do? Ching! Ho ha! Ching! You know? I believe that Moses, he did learn a lot of karate. He was a karate guy. So he knocked his eye out with one, like he boxed him. And do you see? This angel, he have no idea he's playing with who. First, he's a Jew. Secondly, this is Mushas, Mushay. The poor angel of death, he come to Mushay, say, Habibi Mushay. Habibi Mushay, don't use your martial art with me, please. I am just a servant of Allah. I came to take your soul. Mushay, he said to him, stupid. I cannot stop, close my bank now. I have to collect more money. The angel, he said, but I cannot go back to Allah without taking your soul. I'm the angel of death. Moses, he said to him, stand your ground. If you move one more step, you are, only Allah knows what will happen to you. The stupid angel did not listen. He thought that Moses is bluffing. He walked one more step and Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. 
He used his martial art technique, which is called shuku shuku. Chi shuku kuku. And then, and then he took the eye of the angel out. The angel, by the way, did not just stay there. He went back to Allah, asking for justice. So the angel of death went back to Allah and he said, You send me to a servant who don't want to die. You send me to a servant who don't want to die. Allah, he scratched his ass. He thought about it. He said, okay. So Allah, he restored his eyes. So his eyes goes from boing to bing. So now it is in location, in the proper place, which is in his nose. And then Allah, he said to the angel, go back to him and tell him, if he want to live, want life, he must place his hand on the back of an ox. I mean, look at this. In the back of an ox, not a camel, not a donkey. Wisdom. Hindu. And then, he would have granted you as many years as the number of air covered by his hand. And now I understand why Allah did not say to him, place your hand in the top of a cat. Here we go. Hello? Uh, hello, Christian Prince. Um, what are you talking about in your video? No, in the street. What I'm talking about, you don't listen? You're not listening? Well, I'm listening. I listened to some parts of it. Uh, you're talking about Muhammad Sallallahu death, correct? Yes. Mm, I see. Uh, can you point your arguments? I can what? Like, uh, can you point some hadith, please? Like, I just well, your prophet, he said he died because of the poison he ate at Khaybar. Yes, he did not die in the, after he ate the poison. No. Yeah, so? He died because of the poison, right? You could say he did, yeah. Okay, so I, here we need to, to have some questions about this. As you see, Moses, says when the angel of death, he came to him, he knocked his eye and he sent him back. So you can reject death and you can stop Allah. Uh, secondly, I mean, Muhammad did not, wasn't able to do that, maybe because he's dying, I don't know, I'm not sure. But why Allah, he saved Jesus in Islam, but he did not save Muhammad from the horrible death of poison? Is this like a type of argument that I read? No, excuse me. Excuse me. I take what I said. So are you saying that uh, when Allah said to Isa, he did not say Muhammad? I'm not saying. This is what the story is saying. Allah, did Allah save Isa according to Islam and he did not save Muhammad? Yes, yes. He did save uh, Isa. Okay. Did he, did he save Muhammad? Obviously, no. No, no. He did not. He oh. let him die and will be in Jannah. Okay. So why Allah did not save Muhammad from the death by the Jews? Allah, he saved Jesus. Yeah, a Jewish woman, the one who killed him, she but she went to Walmart, mm -hmm. she bought some uh, can poison. Can you call the hadith? Yeah, it says here, the prophet in his, Aisha, she said, the prophet in his element, which he died, he used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar, and at this time I feel as of my altar being cut off from that poison. Khaybar is a give Jewish a tribe. Uh, give me a second, I've seen a refutation of this, give me a second. You have a refutation for this? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a notation of the notation. Oh, okay. Okay, give me a second, my hand. Hmm. Oh, my days. I have like a notation of this hadith being re did a refutation. Uh, do you mind I actually not? I see, I can't find it. Hmm. Um, well, well, I'll say I cannot answer that. Excuse me, sorry. Okay, thank you for not answering that. I mean, do you see what is that? What I would do with this wisdom? That's so much wisdom, brother. That's. Did you hear the answer? I cannot answer that. I don't know what to say. I'm out of words. I got refuted. I cannot answer that. So they scream day and night that Allah, he saved Jesus. Allah, he saved Jesus. Allah, he saved Jesus. 
And who is the most beloved prophet to Allah? Muhammad. Brother, who is the most beloved prophet? Allah, Muhammad. Actually, if not Muhammad, Allah did not even create the earth, the hadith says. Even his chair, the chair of Allah, is created just for the sake of Muhammad. The tablet of Allah, the pen of Allah, the angel of Allah, human being, everything created for the sake of Muhammad. And then Muhammad died by poison from Walmart, and Allah is not even there. This is remind me of the brave Joe Biden, you know. He claimed that he is a friend to the Ukrainian. When the Ukrainian need him most, he go to Walmart. And he said to the American, leave the country, leave the... Have you ever heard of a friend, he leave the country when people they need you? I mean, that's a very good friend, unbelievable. What a hero. What a scumbag. And this is the same as Allah. Muhammad now is dying, he is suffering with pain. At least give him some uh, Advil. I mean, at least... The guy, his arta is cutting off from pain. What a coward God. I mean, even he did beat Joe Biden with his cowardness and his stupidity. This coward Joe Biden, he claimed that the Russian, they are going to invade Russia, and he said to them, we will not uh, find, we will not, we will take our soldiers, so to come in. We will take our family, come in. We will take the Americans, so come in. What, what is that? I want to know who is the donkey who made this person president. Just, I want to know. Is it the termite who ate the election papers, maybe? We have another donkey in Canada right now. His name is Trudeau. Where are those people coming from? I mean, is the earth now is ruled by aliens? They look like ones. Trudeau. I mean, even his name is Trudeau. What do you want more? Trudeau, Joe Biden, Muhammad. The three musketeers. Any Muhammadan? Okay, forget about any Muhammadan. Any, any two Muhammadan? Because look like one Muhammadan is not good. Anyone? Do we have any people here from Canada? Who is here from Canada? Hey, Canadian, where have you been all those years? I mean, you are waiting all those years for this garbage guy to be there. How in the world this guy is elected? You tell me, how in the world this guy is even there? I mean, this guy, he looked like a boy. He don't even look like a man. What the heck? How do you call in? First, you have to have a call, and then you in, you know? And that's it, you know? This is the explanation of Joe Biden, peace be upon him. You know the thing? What do you mean how you do a thing? You call in, you know, we are using Skype. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, he gave Taliban $85 billion weapon. And he gave the Ukrainians some rifles. It's not even $1 million. The German, they gave them hat, 5,000 hat. May Allah bless Germany, brother. A bunch of garbage. What a bunch of garbage. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? 
Why Allah did not save Muhammad from the horrible death of poison bought from Walmart? And what is make bothering me really that this poison did not even cost her 10 cents? I mean, do you know even how this Jewish woman she got the poison? Cheap poison. Anyone? My brothers and sisters, I hope you are enjoying my new microphone. And uh, when I bought this microphone, they told me this microphone can speak Spanish. So I hope if you are Spanish, by the way, you can switch the language. Now you can hear me in Spanish because this microphone can uh, speak Spanish, Portuguese, German, uh, uh, Af uh, Afghani, you know, Afghani, you know, like, let me speak to you, Afghani. Uh, hello, how are you? And uh, Allah knows best. That's Afghani. Now I switched to English. Hello, how are you? Allah knows best. This is now English version of what I said in Afghani. And your side, because this is a very good uh, microphone, you will hear it in your language, okay? Don't forget to switch the speakers because we have like every speaker will speak in different language. I mean, even when Jesus, he sent his disciples, they spoke tongues. Muhammad, he needs seven tongues in Arabic to explain the Quran and to have the Quran given. I mean, how dummy this is that? I mean, the same language, we need seven Quran, but a person from Pakistan, he can understand the Quran and he don't have any of them. Seven Quran to understand the same language. Unbelievable. Uh, our friend Eliza, she just texted with me and she said the, the, the offer is still standing. I'm not sure what does that mean, standing, Eliza. Eliza. Hello? Hello? Well, I can't hear you, Eliza. Your microphone is muted. The offer is still standing. I mean, you see in YouTube, there's people who review cameras. Cam company, they give them free camera to review. Somebody, he do like hunting. So they can send him some anim animation for free. Two bucks, three bucks to review. Even guns. Uh, I, me, because I speak about Islam, I receive nipples to review. This is not unfair. I mean, this is not, not fair. The one who review Sony TV, they send him a free C T Sony TV. The one who review a camera, they send him a free camera. Review phone, they send him a free phone. I get nipples to review. Life is not fair. I told her to call because the first call did not go through. Eliza, you know, she is trying to offer she have maybe different uh, options with this offer. <coughs> well, we would like to save her from the cult of Islam, but she have to change her mentality, you know, of this uh, faith religion. What do you mean best right job? Reviewing nipples is the best job? What's wrong with you? Ar Arakil. Are you jealous? No, she is not. You know, this is what they believe. Why is it wrong? You see, so when Muhammad, he said, women, they can give their breast, he was a trolling. 
This is serious, my friend. What trolling? Was Muhammad trolling when he said that a woman she can give her breast to a stranger a second ten time? Even he claimed that Allah he sent verses about it. So what do you mean trolling? And I wish this filthy God did not eat the Quran. And I find that this is very suspicious about the goat eating the verses because from the whole Quran, this goat, she chose certain verses. All of them, they are sexual. Who in the world want to believe this? That the goat she go, she flipped Muhammad from his bed. He's dead now, as long as we are talking about his death. And look what happened after his death. After his death, a goat she go inside the bedroom. Ayesha, she said, the verses of stoning and breastfeeding for adult ten times revealed. And the paper was under my, under my pillow. So this is the Quran. And now Muhammad is dead. The goat, she go inside the bedroom of Muhammad. She jump in the top of the bed. Still, she cannot get the Quran because Muhammad dead, his head on the pillow. So the only way for the, for the goat to get the Quran is to push Muhammad from the bed, make him fail down in the ground, move the pillow, and then she flipped the pages of the Quran, and she chose certain verses, because she did not eat the whole Quran. And then she ate the breast, feeding for adult ten times, and stoning to death, and both of them, they are sexual. And here you need to ask yourself a very simple question. The goat, she ate the Quran. Did she eat the memory of the Muhammadan about the verses? Don't the Muslim, they say that we recite the Quran by heart? Okay, we got it, we got it. The goat, she ate the Quran. Did she eat your memory too? Who is the Muhammadan who can recite for us the 10 time breastfeeding for adult? That's why I'm saying that there is something fishy about this story. Obviously, the Muslims is the one who ate the verse. Not only the goat. The goat did eat them, maybe, you know. But the real one who really ate the verses is the Muhammadan. Because we cannot find them no more. And this is my challenge. I challenge you to show me the verses about the breastfeed for adults in time. Hmm? And we don't want to mention now that when Muhammad he died, the Muslim did not bury him for three days until his stink and his belly. The hadith says, batnahu, which means his belly become full of gas and fart, and he starts farting. I don't know if you know this. If a person he died, and if he stay out for a few days, his stomach will become so big, regardless where you put him, even if he's in the water, his stomach will become so big because all the gas from the bacteria, which is consuming the food in his stomach, whatever food he have, they will cause gas, and that gas will not be able to be revealed because, I mean, relieved, because now he's dead. So he don't have control of it. So his stomach will keep growing, 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 growing. That's why the hadith says, وَقَدْ رَبَى بَطْنَهُ His stomach, his belly becomes so big, full of fart. And then Ibn Abbas, he said, إِدْفِنُوا صَاحِبَكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْسًا كَمَا يَأْسَنُ الْبَشَرُ Bury your friend, he stink like all a human, they stink. And now if we ask the Muhammadan, why you did not bury Muhammad for three days? No answer. Are you hoping that he will be the same as a Christ? I can't tell you the answer for this. Because one of the lies of Muhammad, that prophets of God, when they die, their body cannot be consumed by the ground. So the Muslim, they said to themselves, why will we bury him? If his body will not be consumed, his body will not be decaying, why we have to bury him, leave it as a miracle? 
And this is the hadith, as you see, is Sahih. Muhammad, he said to them, pray on me every Friday, not send a blessing, pray. Invoke your prayer to me every Friday. They said to him, Prophet, uh, uh, how our Prophet will sub be submitted to you and your body will be decay? Isn't it going to decay? The Messenger of Allah, he said, well, Allah has forbidden the earth from consuming or consuming the bodies of the Prophet. So everything about the death of Muhammad proven to us that he is a fraud before the death and after the death and during the death. Everything. It's a clear sign of a fraud. 